everybody. This is uh, Austin Bronner here with me. He's the CEO of Brand Growth Experts. He helps uh, business owners send better, smarter, more profitable emails. And I'm Pep Laya um, from CXL Institute. And we're here in my small office today talking about email marketing. Talking about email marketing. Yeah, I'm excited. Awesome. So, first thing. How like everybody is like yeah yeah I do email marketing but yeah. like are they are they really doing email marketing like what what are they not doing your your average marketer sure it's a, that's a really good question because you're right everybody thinks to themselves if you're asking them you know do you do do you do email marketing everybody yeah does. Better, right? oh yeah, yeah we we do email marketing uh, the difference between somebody who's doing optimized email marketing and somebody who is just sending out a couple of emails once or twice a month is drastic. It's completely different. Okay. Um, and, and so usually it takes a while of like asking questions when I'm working with different, different clients to figure out how well they're actually performing with their email. Um, questions that I ask are usually around, you know, what percentage of your emails are, are automated or triggered emails versus specific like just you know campaign newsletter emails uh -huh. uh, oftentimes people will just be sending out newsletter emails and completely neglecting uh, the triggered email side of the business which, uh, and what do you mean by triggered emails is like drip autoresponders or so you know I work mostly with e-commerce brands mm -hmm. and triggered emails are emails that are fired off of specific actions that people do or do not take on your website. Like add to cart, buy something, add a coupon code, like. Yeah, exactly. So um, that really, if I was kind of like to break down the differences between emails, there's the newsletter or campaign style, which is you kind of batch them and blast mm -hmm. it out. And then triggered emails, which are based off of different actions. So like you mentioned, somebody could add to cart and that's one thing that they could do. They could uh, like browse a specific item, mm -hmm. look at it and then leave. And that's browse abandonment. And you can email mm -hmm. people based off okay. of browse abandonment. Uh, they could make a purchase and then you could trigger emails based off of their purchase. Like uh, a nice shirt, want some pants. Exactly. Upsell type emails. Mm -hmm. uh, also on the other side, there's people, people who don't take action. So um, you look at some people who buy, but don't buy again. So they may hit a certain threshold where you realize they're not buying in and you can trigger emails off of that. How long do you wait? You know, like what's a reasonable expectation of when they should buy again? Yeah, and that, that's, that is, that is the, the big question, uh -huh. right? And that's the question that every business is really different, right? If somebody's selling, um, you know, example, microphones yeah. online, Right, somebody's gonna buy one, and they really sell uh, for two years. Yeah, two years. exactly, two yeah. years till the next model comes up. So yeah. you're not gonna panic if somebody doesn't buy again in the next thirty days. Uh, on the other hand, if you're selling, let's say, a co like coffee, or you're selling replenishable mm -hmm. socks, right? The 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 life cycle that your customer has uh, is gonna be much shorter. So you'd want to identify when people are most likely to mm -hmm. buy again. And then when they pass that threshold of when they're most likely to buy again on their own, then you might want to trigger an email to them based on okay. that. So which out of all the possible triggers, what are the like the top three that everybody should do? Yeah. Um, so if I was to break it down by top three, I think I would look at the ones that generate the most revenue. Um, and I would start by looking at, uh, I would say, before even going into what emails is in, I would look at how you're capturing emails on a website. Okay. Uh, because you're not going to be able to send a lot of those triggered emails if you don't, if you haven't captured somebody's email and don't have that, uh, don't have that email in your database to be able to send them emails. So first, um, first and foremost, I would say the most important thing you can do is to increase your opt-in rates, so you're capturing more and more emails and have a larger database. Do you recommend pop-ups for it or? So uh, a couple things, you would, I definitely recommend using some sort of a, a pop-up, um, but I would also uh, recommend building opt-ins into your website. 
right? So like static boxes. Yeah, static boxes with clear offers. Uh, I think that most of the time when people are struggling to capture capture uh, emails, it's because they just haven't defined the offer mm-hmm. that like a really quality offer and tested it to get people to opt in. So, what are some quality offers? Discount. Yeah, I mean, so the most basic one is a discount, right? Mm-hmm. The most standard out of the box. Does it still work? It's it still works. Mm-hmm. Sure, like if you're if you're selling a T-shirt online, yeah. if you're selling shoes, and you say, do you want ten percent off? A lot of people are going to opt in for that. Yeah, it's better than do you want to download a white paper about well, these jeans? Exactly. Do you want? Yeah. Do you, yeah. <laughs> written by the person Mine's who, like who yeah. designed these. Yeah. No. So that that's that's highly relevant. The downside with giving away a discount is obviously you're giving up a percentage of your sales, right? So you're mm-hmm. giving up right there. You're giving up a percentage of your margin right, right off right, the right. bat, ten percent yeah. off. Uh-huh. So, so what's uh, an alternative? So the, the question that you know you want to ask is, is it worth to give up a 10% off? So mm-hmm. you can test multiple different opt-ins. There, you could test 10% off, you could test 15% off, you could test dollar off. So mm-hmm. maybe if you your average order value is around $45, maybe you give a dollar off somebody's first purchase over $45. And somebody care about one dollar off. No, like uh, t- like a dollar percentage off, oh, so like ten dollars off, okay. or something like that. Dollar off, no. Or $45 no. <laughs> no, no, it's not going to be that that valuable. I, yeah. Where, where um, but you you can take a dollar percentage off and test that versus something like I've had a lot of success with sweepstakes giveaways. Mm-hmm. So if you're selling, let's say, um, you know, Cup's got a nice leather bag here. Uh, this. If you if you're selling leather bags for four hundred dollars, maybe once a month you give away a leather bag to people who subscribe, right? Yeah. So you give that away, and that's going to cost you, let's say, two hundred dollars, maybe a hundred and fifty dollars. Mm-hmm. Okay. So but, yeah, but you capture tons of emails in exchange for giving away that once 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 a month, and it's going to cost you a lot less than giving away ten percent right. off. Okay. So first up, we capture a bunch of emails. Yes. So when they come. Also, then we need to cookie them so we're able to know who's adding the cart and or not. So, if depending on the tool that you use, uh, if you most email service like if you're using uh, like what I recommend, which is Klaviyo mm-hmm. for e-commerce email marketing, if you set it up, it's they're going to be cookied and they're, they're, the pixel will track them adding to cart, browse a brand like abandoning uh, even if they're not logged in, yeah. Uh, so once you capture their email, yes, they'll be cookied, and mm. it'll track their profile around. And no matter what they do on the site, you'll be able to see what they view. Unless uh, they're, you know, using their work computer or a phone or exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the usual cookie problems. The usual cookie problems. Okay. But once once you capture the email, right? Like some of the most profitable things you can do. Uh, one immediately move to try to get that initial sale. So. Um, Start by if you have it, say, let's just go with the most basic thing 10% off. Mm-hmm. Right? If you have people opt in for that, then using some sort of a, an evergreen limited type offer to get them to redeem that within 24 or 48 hours. Mm-hmm. Having your code expire is a very uh-huh. good way to be able to get people to initially make a purchase. If they don't buy right away, it's not just over. To send them a reminder that, hey, your coupon is about to it, expire. Exactly. You can send them a reminder. Really what I like to call it is a sequence I call a buy or die sequence where you go and you, you, the only goal of that sequence is to inform people enough and provide enough offers to, forget to, to get them to make their first purchase. Because ultimately, your best marketing is your product, right? Your best marketing yeah. is people trying your product. It doesn't matter how, much, how many videos they've seen until they've actually um, experienced it, they can't really, I mean, how many, how many evangelists do you have of your conference that have never been to your conference? Oh, hundreds, thousands. Well, an evangelist, people that like have actually well, I mean, promote your con- they have to go to your conference where they can promote your conference. Yeah, I guess so. Like some are like just fed off the brand, so they like reach it because of that. Sure, sure, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But ultimately, the best experience is for sure. If somebody actually goes, like, yeah, this you know, you have the best parties or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> yeah. So, so the, the initially, you know, you get them to opt in. Your first sequence should be designed to get them to make that first purchase. Uh, so, you know, examples ahead were uh, expiring coupons and then moving through content, showing them a lot of like 
sometimes the big question you have to answer the questions in a prospect's head that they are that they're that struggling with before making a purchase. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, social proof, like they want to know, like is the product going to work for me specifically? So providing reviews with people that are explaining how it solves a specific problem for them, that's effective for driving sales. Uh, and then back to what I was talking about earlier with the life cycle, depending on the style of product, your timeline of when you're going to provide incentives to make a purchase will either shrink down. So imagine if you're selling a $15, uh, some sort of a $15 no brainer type product, like a, I always go with a t-shirt example because it's like a no brainer. It's a thought, no thought process goes into buying a t-shirt. Mm -hmm. So that versus selling a fly fishing rod, right? Mm -hmm. A thousand dollar fly fishing rod might take some more time to think about whether or not you're going to invest in this. And in that sense, your initial sequence might be a little bit longer before you start escalating an offer to get somebody to make an initial purchase. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a sequence that works really well as like an initial buy or die sequence. Two other really profitable sequences, if you aren't running them or if they're maybe under-optimized, um, the uh, abandoned cart sequence. Mm -hmm. It's definition of a triggered email. Somebody, somebody uh, adds a item to their cart, they leave, and then you follow up with them to kind of push over the edge to make Do you that use they offer a discount or just remind them first? That's a fantastic question. So I, I like to think about uh, think about the actual process of abandoning a cart. Not everybody abandons a cart because they think that it's too expensive. Some people might think that, mm -hmm. but not everybody. So I don't initially go, I don't recommend initially going to a, um, a discount offer. I like to think about the person who's, you know, they're at their house, they're looking, they add it to cart, Mm -hmm. And then something happens. Maybe they got to run out to go pick up their kid from school. Uh, maybe they added it on their mobile device, mm -hmm. and they are they're going to think about maybe go checking out later on desktop. Mm -hmm. um, those types of people they don't need a discount. Yeah, 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 I use like when I shop at Amazon. Like I add, let's say, I'm researching like my my daughter's birthday is coming up, so yeah. I'm actually researching crawling uh, baby dolls that say mama. Yeah. So I have like seven in the cart because they're only in the cart because like I'm going to buy one of them They're like for comparison reasons. Yeah. And they've been sitting in that cart in Amazon for like I don't know, a week now. Yeah. I haven't decided yet. So Amazon would send me an email like every day like, hey, baby's <laughs> in your cart. I would go nuts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, so, it, but again, so imagine one of those things goes on mm -hmm. sale for 20% off. You you might pull the trigger on that one. Well, I'm not a price sensitive buyer. Okay. Uh, so, so again, the great, a great example of why initially you don't necessarily yeah, need to go to the discount. This is an you know, important birthday gift, so it needs to be the best doll. Exactly. Like, yeah. Like whether it's 20 or 30 bucks. So, so initially, like I'm not going initially to offer a discount. At a certain point, though, it's, in, it's, it's definitely worth it's definitely worth trying uh, and testing mm -hmm. between a, um, I mean the typical sequence that I run is like, start with no, two hours later, send an email, uh, a more customer support type email. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, we noticed that you added this to your cart, haven't checked it out, do you have any questions? Feel free to reach out to our support team here, and we'll, we'll help you out. What's the typical um, uptake rate on those emails? Like how many can you get back? 2%, 5%? Oh, like placed order rate? Yeah, like when they send the reminder email and how many actually come back and complete the purchase. Oh, they, uh, so on that first email after, if it goes out after two hours, I like to see around like between maybe five to 10% uh -huh. um, placed order rate. And you can, you can see, if it's, if it's a really effective email, you can see that. Because some, some of those people are gonna buy anyway, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. add it to your cart. So you can, you can have a lot of success with that one. Mm -hmm. um, after that first two hour period, then it kind of moves into a different time where it's people that maybe were scared off by shipping costs. I mean, that's, if you look at the number one reason why people who are actually intending to buy abandon, mm -hmm. it's usually sh shipping costs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so those people, then you might, then you might start escalating 
and adding an additional offer. Maybe you give them free shipping, maybe it's a percentage off, and you start working your way through a sequence. I like to escalate over a period of time, over like seven days. So maybe the first one's a low, a low discount, mm -hmm. then a, better, a higher discount a couple days later, then a higher discount after that, your best mm -hmm. offer. The reason I like doing that is because then you don't give away your margin. Mm -hmm. So you, um, you give, the, the, the idea is to get people to convert at the lowest possible discount. Yeah, yeah, you maintain yeah. your margin. What about the threat of training people to abandon cards so they will get discounts? So that is a uh, that's it's a good question. One that a lot of people are, are are nervous of. Now we have the tools and the ability that it's almost that we can very easily uh, prevent that. So if you use a tool like Clavio or maybe like Retention Science, either one of those, you can split it up so that people who are first time customers receive different offer sequences mm -hmm. than second time customers. You could, um, you could even, you can split it up based on, like you mentioned earlier, not being price sensitive, mm -hmm. right? not be a price sensitive shopper. You could set it up so that if somebody has previously only purchased with a discount, then you offer them a discount. If they've previously purchased without a mm -hmm. discount, they never would see a discount. Because you're, you're defining between people right, right, who are right, right. Um, price sensitive, not price sensitive. Mm -hmm. Again, a lot of that's like kind of overkill. And it's only when you get to a really large brand that you want to dive into that. The most basic test that I, I recommend people run is running one sequence that's percentage off and running another sequence that's dollar off on whatever offer you're giving. When I say dollar off, that meant mean like $5 off a $45 product. Mm -hmm maybe $10 off $45 product. Is that an actual A-B test, kind of email A-B test campaign? Or? So what, what you can do is you can split it up and send 50% down one channel, 50% mm -hmm. down the other channel. Mm -hmm. And then you can let that run for a couple months and mm -hmm. see how what your place to order yeah, looks yeah, like. Yeah. You could also even split out another group that doesn't receive anything and then export it all and look at look at the results and, and see how it. often are those two groups are different like are they mostly the same or is it, can you see big differences in terms of results so um you can see very big differences in terms of results especially around dollar off and percentage off uh -huh. so clavio ran a uh, a study last year where they analyzed every single one of their abandoned card email sequences mm -hmm. and it was a couple million emails and they found that uh, there was significant outperformance out of people who were using dollar off versus percentage off sequences. So 20 bucks off is better than 10% off, kind of. <laughs> that, yeah, exactly. And, and for whatever reason, in, mm -hmm. in the abandoned cart scenario, that was out. That was outperforming. It was driving more revenue per recipient. Nice. Yeah. So that that was the big takeaway from the last year's uh, mm -hmm. analysis of, of what Clavio has mm -hmm. been doing. Um, um, okay, so abandoned cart, good. What other triggers? So you? the other uh, other big trigger emails to think about, like what happens when somebody makes the initial purchase? We touched on it a little bit, but mm -hmm. your second, uh, the second purchase made by a customer is, is way more profitable to your business than generally than your than the first purchase. If you're going out and you're spending, like most e-commerce businesses are out there spending money on Facebook ads, Google AdWords, there's a high cost per acquisition for that initial sale. Ooh. If you can then get that person on an email list mm -hmm. and drive a second sale through email, it's no longer, you're no longer paying per click, you're paying, uh, basically a fixed fee for your email service provider. Mm. And then when you send an email and somebody makes a purchase, you don't have to spend whether it's 20 or $40 for an acquisition cost like you mm -hmm. would to retarget it. Mm -hmm. So some really profitable, uh, profitable sequences are sequences designed to get somebody to go from a single purchase to a second purchase. Uh, with that, you got to ask the question, like when are people most likely to buy again? Mm -hmm. Figure that out. And then once you figure that out, you uh, can set up a sequence that tries to basically incentivize them to make that second purchase. So you have to analyze, a lot of this is product analysis. So it's looking at what type of product are you selling? 
are you selling a replenishable? If you're selling a replenishable, when do people typically run out? Mm -hmm. And then right about when they run out, you might send them an email that reminds them to make that second purchase, not offering anything. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Just a reminder. Just a couple of days ago, a dude from Poland emailed me and asked, like, he runs an online furniture store. Yep. And he said he, he, he has no repeat purchases because once you buy a bed, it's there for like 20 years. So, he, like, he was like, the hell do I do to increase, you know, repeat purchases? So, if you buy, if, it, if it's seriously like a one and done type uh, I think, and no one's ever going to do it, couple, ever gonna buy again, then what I like to say is either have to identify, identify best actions they could take. So if they're only gonna buy one ever, but they might be able to refer you to a friend. So a sequence you could set up would be something like, uh, uh, a net promoter score where you follow up with a net promoter score survey and if people rank you nine out of ten, nine or ten, meaning that they're highly likely to refer you to a friend, maybe that guy would run a sequence after that saying about mm -hmm. explaining his referral program. I'm glad you like the bed. Very simply, like the way our business grows is through referrals. We don't have a large marketing budget. The reason we were able to keep our costs low explaining this mm -hmm. is because of referrals from quality, like customers like you. If you know somebody, here's our program and maybe even offer them something for the referral program. Mm -hmm. That's what you do. Again, though, like in those scenarios, you can still have a ton of success optimizing for pre-purchase triggered emails. Yeah. Abandoned yeah. cart, like for him browse abandonment mm -hmm. um, sequences where people maybe add a look at a bed but don't make a purchase then you mm -hmm. follow up about that specific bed yeah cool uh, when you're sending these triggered emails how much copy do you add is it very short and to the point or like to, I don't, you know long narratives stories so it's definitely a mix of the two depending on what what the goal of the email is um, let's start with a tangible example, which is uh, like an abandoned cart, right? Mm -hmm. Because I start by analyzing what's the goal of an abandoned cart email. It's to get them to make a purchase. So mm -hmm. generally those emails are shorter, uh, have limited call to actions except for going back to the cart. Mm -hmm. I would always include on those emails phone number, customer service phone number, as well as email so people could connect back and also set it so that somebody could easily reply back to that email. So Generally, don't send from no reply at... No, no. Make sure, make it easy for people. Please reply. Yeah, yeah. Please, please reply. What is your problem? Yeah, Just yeah, reply yeah. back. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, sometimes set those up in a way that looks like it's personally written by a um, customer service agent or even the CEO. Mm -hmm. uh, of uh, if it's a if it's a founder facing brand, mm -hmm. and that can be really effective because people will reply back right away. I've had people reply back saying, "Oh, like I'm you know the quite an email goes out saying uh, <laughs> we noticed you added this to your cart. We um, we want to make sure that you know qu qu this is a busy time of year. We want to make sure that if you do actually want it, we have it in stock because it's been selling out quite quickly. So we put in some urgency in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we say, you know, just following up. I know that if it's interesting, if, it, if you really want it, make a purchase in the next couple of days. Uh -huh. Then people reply back thinking it's a real email yeah, saying, yeah, yeah. I'm waiting on payday. Like it's going to, like I'm going I'm to sorry. buy Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> like, so, so in regards to copy and how long, um, it depends on the email. Abandoned card emails are generally short, but I like to put in urgency and, and try personalization. That uh -huh. generally has worked. So in terms of personalization, so you know, like if it's a B2B email, we can do, you know, enrich the email using Clearbit or whatever, so we know that they're a product manager at a $10 million company. But these are people with like Yahoo's and Gmail's. Yeah. What else do you know about them besides their name? How can you personalize? So um, that it depends if they're customers or not. Uh -huh. Previous customers. So if you're if you're using a service like uh, like Clavio, you have a really you can pull 
variables from everything they've ever purchased. Or like billing address and like, hey, how's the weather in Texas? You know, you, you could do that. I, that, I think that's so, that, that's kind of overkill. Uh, but so let's say somebody adds something to this is like going kind of down a crazy mm -hmm. rabbit hole, but it's possible. Say somebody adds something to their cart. Mm -hmm. They add uh, a say a, some Converse sneakers, red Converse sneakers that Pep's wearing. They add those. Pep adds them to his cart. Right? I could see that on his profile in Clavio. I could then take that and turn that into a, it's a variable. So I can put that in the email and be like, hey, hey Pep, uh, I noticed that you know you added those Converse, those mm -hmm. red Converses to your cart. Uh, I just wanted to let you know, you know, there's gonna be a run, we're, we're almost out of that specific item. Good choice though, if mm -hmm. you wanna make that purchase. Um, you got, but again, that's, that's too much. What I meant by personalization is more uh, sending it from, like testing, sending it from a person versus sending it from just the store, the name. store name. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how often are people get uh, like creeped out? Like, how did you know that I'm buying these sneakers? You creep, you're watching me. <laughs> how often do you get that? Uh, um, well, I think, I try to uh, try to stay away from like putting in uh, merge variables into the emails because it's not that effective and it's kind of creepy. So I, I don't often do that. Uh, but a lot of times, if you go around and if you want to do this experiment, go to like six or eight online direct to consumer stores, add to cart, leave, and watch the emails that come in. Almost all of them are going to include a picture of the item that you uh, added to your cart. Mm. Generally, people aren't creeped out by the fact that you're reminding them about an item they added to the cart. Uh, if you are super personal about it and say like, we've been watching your cart, it's a little, a little the way that Yeah, well, what if it's like a, a sensitive you know, genre, like you know, sex toys, and, and browsing these dildos over here, it's like, hey, you just added this red dildo to your cart. <laughs> I don't know, dude, don't watch me. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's, that's gonna be, that's where you have to figure out your specific product. Yeah, you yeah, want to send yeah. A, yeah, a 15 email follow-up sequence of the red dildo. <laughs> that dildo, dildo man's running out. So yeah. about right. Right. <laughs> exactly. The season is here. <laughs> the crisp, Christmas is here. No, yeah. so yeah, it, it, again, it's product, it's product specific. Like like you like you even mentioned, like if you got 15 emails about the, the dolls in your, yeah. your cart, you're not yeah. going to don't want to fucking shop there anymore. <laughs> I mean, it's Amazon. You have to like come live without it. Um, cool. So email copy, got it personalized. Um, uh, can how how can we avoid over emailing somebody? Because you know, let's say that we are triggering emails, we're yeah. sending newsletters. Like, like, how do we ensure that somebody doesn't get two emails a day or something? Sure. Um, so there's, I think there's two ways to do that. One of them is more of like a a bigger picture process, mm -hmm. which is emailing your engaged people. Mm -hmm. uh, so how do you prevent people from getting too many emails? Well, you can vary the segments that you send emails to. So you might gr gr have a group of people that are very engaged, meaning they open up every single email. Mm -hmm. It's okay to send those people every single email. Like mm -hmm. maybe they, there's, there's a group, in every single business, there's gonna be a group of people who are super fans, yeah. and then there's everybody, everybody else. Right. And so the people who are opening every emails, every email, you might want to continue emailing them or increase the cadence for that group of people, a small segment. People who aren't opening up every email, you might only vary it to send them a couple, maybe four emails a month or something like that if they're mm -hmm. not opening as much. Uh, with, to, to specifically answer your question about how to keep people from getting two emails a day, uh, most email service providers have something like smart sending technology on it that allows you to automatically not send an email to somebody who's previously received an email. Mm -hmm. Generally, I like to use, like I always say it's about precedence. Mm -hmm. So triggered emails, the emails that are based off of actions, yeah. for me, always most likely have precedence over whatever campaign email you're sending out or newsletter mm -hmm. email you're sending out, unless it's like a Black Friday promotion. Mm -hmm. So, uh, because, a triggered email is based on something that they've done, so it's relevant to them. Mm -hmm. So I would let I would put smart sending 
on my newsletters and I would let my abandoned carts and browse abandonments go out go out every time and then um, because they're they're generally being more profitable than whatever newsletter I'm sending out yeah mm -hmm. and you know while it seems that this webinar is brought to you by Clavio Clavio.com it's actually not <laughs> uh, like what other email tools can we use to yeah. set up all this stuff? So um, well, you can talk about Clavio too. No, well, yeah, no, it's it's a, it's a good question because it really depends. Like the right email tool depends on what your business is. Mm -hmm. So the reason I mentioned Clavio is I work with a lot of Shopify Shopify businesses mm -hmm. or Magento businesses. There's a good integration there, so I generally recommend it. Uh, you could use. I mean, some of the more popular ones are uh, Mailchimp. Mailchimp has a e-commerce side. It's not as sophisticated. It's not as good for triggered emails, but it's okay. I like mm -hmm. a company called Retention Science. Mm -hmm. uh, Retention Science is based out of LA. They have gone kind of towards more of the enterprise, uh, mm -hmm. enterprise e-commerce companies. Um, you could go. Those are, I mean, some of the like those active campaigns. Those aren't. Those aren't as popular for e-commerce specifically. Okay. Drip is getting into the e-commerce game um, and they're they're setting up a better Shopify integration. Mm -hmm. On the e-commerce side, the two main games in town are MailChimp and Klaviyo uh, with retention science pulling off a couple. And then there's also like some bigger ones like Bronto, but Bronto, um, Bronto, is not as active in their development of the platform. Mm -hmm. So it's, I don't recommend it as much because they're not rolling out features the way that some of these other, these other companies are. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. And then there's always the question of um, attribution. So, you know, we're sending all these emails, uh, trigger them in whatever ways. So yeah. how can we actually know that that email made us money and how can we, you know, like how much, you know, so basically, Unit economics for emails. Yes. Um, so a couple things, depending on your email service provider, if there's a really a good integration between uh, your platform and what, like, whether it's Shopify, Magento, or Custom Card, if you have a good integration, it's a lot easier to track sales between emails and, and, and your platform. So if you're using um, if you're using retention science, if you're using Clavio, if you're using Drip, I believe there's integrations and it's going to give you some sort of a readout that's the inside, the email. inside the email service uh -huh. provider. Again, that's going to be some that that's one way to start looking at your attribution and see the effectiveness effectiveness of your emails. Mm -hmm. If you're if your Google Analytics setup is really really good and you've done a good job of you know doing the technical side and to set that, set that up, then you can add um, UTM parameters mm -hmm. to your specific emails. And when people then click, the UTM parameter will be passed and recognizing Google Analytics to see mm -hmm. what happens when people make a purchase. Right, right, right. Uh, but that, again, you have to make sure that you're using yeah. Google Analytics. And the enhanced e-commerce and all that is exactly. set up. And, uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, other other good tools that you could use specifically for capturing emails. Um, there's basically for on the e-commerce side. There's Just Uno. There's Sumo. Uh, there's Privy. Um, there's Optimonk. Uh, those are there's Optin Monster. Those are the top kind of like five that are are doing interesting things on. Um, in e-commerce, I think it's a really interesting. It's a field that doesn't have a lot of like super strong players. Uh, there, there could be some more innovation in that field. I see. Uh, have you seen those? Um, I think Bounce Exchange is doing these like spin wheels. You know, mm -hmm. like spin the wheel yes. to get you know see what your discount is. Kind of like game, gamifying yeah. it. Gamification. So Bounce Exchange is doing that. That's uh, another really big player. Bounce Exchange, Wheelio. Um, so with the gamification, that's become really popular. You, if you're going anywhere shopping, now you're seeing gamification on the email opt-in. So that generally drives a lot of leads, mm -hmm. but it also drives a lot of bad leads. Mm -hmm. Like people just put in their put in a junk email to get some sort of coupon. 
So if you're using that, you have to really like clean your list and make sure that you're uh, make sure you're removing the spam, junk emails mm -hmm. uh, because two times in the last six months I've had clients come to me and be like, our email our email uh, open rate went from fifteen percent to two percent. What do we do? Yeah. And and they got put in the spam Gmail spam box and uh, we had to like start a process of getting out of that and that's yeah, yeah, yeah. it's that's just purely because they had bad listening we we had the same type of uh, you know not the same numbers but like basically del deliverability issues and then open rates went down and then I was talking to my friend Brian Dean who uh, basically he purges his list once a year or twice a year basically anybody who hasn't opened an email in six months take them off the list yes and I started doing this as well. I, I, used, I started to basically send them one last email. Like, if you open this email, you, you can stay on the list. Like, if you don't open this one, out. And yeah, it, it helped a great deal with deliverability, of course, open rates, because not treating people, you know, went away. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, because it doesn't matter how big your list is, it matters how engaged your list is. Uh, yeah. Really, like, that's. People get so caught up on the numbers. They're like, oh, we've got 200,000. Oh, yeah, it's a vanity people. metric. Yeah, my list is bigger than your list. Exactly, yeah. exactly. It doesn't matter. It's how many people are opening the door and buying. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and those people who haven't opened in six months, probably not buying as well. And so no, you, can, yeah. you can check that. If they haven't opened in six months, they haven't yeah, bought anything yeah. ever. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Buy. Also, reduce the cost because most tools charge you based on the number of exactly. subscribers. Uh, let us also check if you guys have any questions. So, so far, no, but we're taking questions. So start typing the questions. Um, <laughs> Type them now. <laughs> um, okay, so what would you say are like top three mistakes people do with email marketing? Top three mistakes. Uh, one of them was not purging their email list. Uh -huh. I mean, that was one of the things that I, I feel is a big issue. Um, and, and, you know, sending, this is a typical example. People will kind of be capturing a lot of emails, not really be emailing, and then they get around to uh -huh. November, and they're like, Q4, they're like, okay, we really wanna have, we wanna have a huge Q4, we've got yeah, pressure. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, all right, we're gonna hit, we're gonna send an email out to everyone. And they, since they haven't established a cadence with their audience, yeah, yeah, yeah. they just show up in these people's inboxes. People don't even know when the last time they received an email from them, they don't even know what the company is anymore. And they're like, unsubscribe, unsubscribe, unsubscribe. And it happens then, to me all the time. Somebody sends an email, like, I've long forgotten how to subscribe and why. Yes. And then they send like email, I'm like, who the hell are you? Like, even like a line of like, we are this company, you know, we do this and that will help. Like, yeah. Triggers my memory. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's a, that's a big, that's a big mistake. You have to be, I think in the general one that, you know, not planning, not planning is, is a, is a, is an issue. Like not planning what? Not planning your content and email marketing strategy out mm -hmm. over a period of three months. Right, like you should have that organized, mm -hmm. and you should be able to know how many emails you're going to be sending out. The biggest way, if you want to improve over the next three months, if you want to make more money from the email channel, yeah. just start by planning out the next three months. Put in whatever you know, and and defining a cadence. If you know you want to send four emails a month, um, and that's your goal, plan out those four. If you're if you're currently sending two, uh, double it to four, mm -hmm. and you're going to have more success. But only if you plan that out, and and make it easier on your team because there can be some somewhat of a burden, and a lot of times people fall into this into this just in time emailing yeah, where it's yeah, like yeah. all we do is just send promotions because we need to drive sales and we're just hitting them up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and uh, mistake number three. Uh, mistake number three, what's another big mistake? Um, I, I think in general, you know, treating your, treating all your subscribers and customers exactly the same way, right? There's, it, it's relatively easy now to 
figure out and look at different segments of your customer base mm -hmm. and find the difference between people who have never bought, find people who have bought one time, and then those people who have bought five times. Don't send an email to the people who have already bought five times telling them about your customer story. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Um, treat those people. Uh, treat those people like you would be treated if you were a VIP at a at a boutique store, mm -hmm. right? Have a different sequence for the people who are mm -hmm. who are VIPs and, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. have different segments for them. Cool. Well, let's start taking these questions here. So, first question was, what do you think of Mailjet for email marketing? So, I don't have a ton of experience with Mailjet. Um, it hasn't been in my sphere of like mm -hmm. brands so I, I can't either recommend or not recommend Mailjet uh, it says what do you recommend as the email marketing strategy for relatively high cost items on e-commerce product cost ranging $300 and higher um, so I don't know what product you're selling I just know it's at $300 or higher I think the the question is are you are you nurturing your subscribers enough to and, and educating them enough about your product to have uh, to give them the information they need to make a purchase? So let's say so wristwatches and leather jackets. All right, wristwatches and leather jackets. Okay, so um, I mean it's it's going to be the foundational strategy is going to be very similar. Uh, the content. Like what is different about your wristwatch and leather jack jacket? You definitely want to define that in your early emails. Um, if you want to identify the people who have already, like if somebody has viewed the product page three mm -hmm. times um, and not added to cart, that's an indication that they are potentially highly motivated for this. Right, right, this right. Totally over there, yeah. So if there, if, if somebody does that you might send a specific email to them about that product and, and, and the, the limited quantities. You gotta, what it, it comes down to just basic marketing where you wanna actually, um, you wanna focus on what's special about your product. If, if these leather jackets are like handmade, uh, if the wristwatches are limited, put scarcity and put that sort of story into it. Mm -hmm. Uh, another question here, do ESPs do email verification before sending out to avoid getting into the spam box? So, um, no, I don't believe that they're doing any email verification before sending out. That's yeah. something you need to do. It's, it, they, it's put on the, um, the person, the business collecting emails mm -hmm. to verify the emails and you've got a personal responsibility. Do you recommend these tools like Bright Verify and these others to, you know, for list cleaning purposes? Uh, so yeah, if, especially, th those are really effective if you've got a list, an older customer list, like that scenario I was talking about where people get to Q4 and they're like, oh, well, like I wanna juice sales, we're gonna email. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't emailed for a while, and you haven't been, uh, then, then it's a great tool to run those through to find some of the ones that are no longer valid emails and remove them before you send it. Yeah, 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 cool. <laughs> Another question here, is picture really important while doing email marketing? Because uh, it might increase the chances of getting stuck in the spam. Uh, it really, it depends on a lot of this. I mean, my default answer is it depends on the product, right? So if you're, if you're, selling wristwatches, leather jackets, then picture might be really important because you're following up with the quality, the craft, those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd also recommend though, testing plain text versus picture emails in a split test. Um, it's, that's, that's one of those things where I've had a lot of success with plain text emails and uh, in situations where people might expect them to be getting a, a fully HTML pictured email. Cool, another question here. With Gmail and Yahoo having a promotional tab, how are we um, to somehow get to our users? So basically, how to get to the real inbox? Yeah, so that 
<laughs> that, that's really not going to happen. If you're, if you are sending out, if you're a brand uh, and you're sending out emails, you're most likely just going to have to deal with the fact that you're in the promotional tab. Uh, there are hacks that you can yeah, try. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying a lot, a lot of um, times. Like basically, I'm send, I'm tweaking my own like newsletter and sending it to select emails and to see where it lands. And the things that I've noticed is like, first of all, you really need to sound like you're writing to a person. Yeah, uh, not like. As soon as you, it sounds marketing, it goes into the marketing box. Uh, no pictures, not more than one link. Because if you email your friend, you're not going to put like 17 links. Uh, yeah, I think that's, that, that question is really the way you should be thinking about it is how do I create enough value in my email, make a valuable email so that people want to read it and open it? Because mm -hmm. if it's valuable, they're going to find it in the promotional tab. Uh, if it's not valuable, it belongs in the promotional tab. So just thinking about, you know, am I, it's a privilege to be in the inbox. Am I creating something that's valuable and putting that out? Not the hacks, the hacks is like telling people to reply to the email. Mm -hmm. That's not going to be a long-term strategy. Uh, and then my question is, what are your thoughts on non-engaged sequences versus one-off open, click this email, or you're out? We were going to start a 90-day re-engagement sequence with the different offers than usual varying email frequency. So basically, uh, I think he's asking about reactivating uh, inactive subscribers. Sure. So versus a one-off open click. Um, so I think the question is has to do with like a like a sunset email is kind of what you were describing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, how do you do it? They said they're going to start doing a ninety day re engagement sequence. Um, I mean, the over let's say ninety days, right? You're if you're thinking about doing a ninety day re engagement sequence, I don't know what your product is and like when people are most likely to buy it again or if it's replenishable. But yeah, over those over those ninety days, you want to put out quality to see if people are opening them up. Uh, ult what what Cup was saying is, you just want to identify the people that over the last six months you can go in your list today. Look at the people who for the last six months have never opened up an email, but have been on the list uh, and received you know been on the list for at least let's say at least at least a month. Uh, and just look at the people who over the last six months who've never opened up an email and never made a purchase from you. And, and those are the people that you want to pull out of your list because they're not going to be, they're not going to be the ones that increase your open rate or increase revenue. You got to be careful. Don't just immediately blast an email, one off email to all these people who are unengaged because you're going to indicate to Gmail that you're sending spam because the people aren't going to open up. Right, you might get a two percent open rate. So what? That's another big, big mistake. Is people here? They're like, oh, we want to make sure that all these. We want to, you know, we want to reduce our email list. And so they, uh, they'll find all these unengaged people who are, who haven't opened up an email in six months or a year. They put them all together and then they send a one-off email, being like, do you? Are you still interested? And they get like a one percent open rate, and that might be the straw that pushes them into the Gmail spam box. Oh. So Seriously, I've gotten really high response rates there. So also, my my subject lines are very threatening, like "fuck off," I'm "gonna delete you," you know, like kind of not really "fuck off." Sure, but you're doing it consistently, right? Sometimes people do this, and they've never ever cleaned their list, mm -hmm. and it's like they let's say they're a sunglass company, mm -hmm. and like you've got also a personality, and like you're sending quality content. It's like, imagine if a company selling mops sent you an email mm -hmm. and you never open up their emails yeah. and they, they, they send an email to a completely disengaged list, uh, that generally can be a, an issue. Cool. And uh, let's take one last question here. Best tool that you can recommend for email campaigns with feature of preference? Uh, <laughs> but, Wait, is there a, I don't know if that's a good one to answer. I don't even know. Uh, so, answer. anyways, your recommended email uh, uh, so tools. So that's Clay. Right? Yeah, Clay. I if you were on, 
depends what you're on. If you're, if you're using Shopify, uh, Magento, or BigCommerce, I would recommend using Klaviyo. If you have a custom cart, it's a little bit more difficult. Um, but, and if you're, those are, yeah, so if you're on a custom cart, and, and it really also depends on what you're doing, right? If you're, if you are selling, um, if you're selling urns or something like that, and that's all, you don't need to have a lot of emails, maybe you just go on MailChimp. Uh, if you're just sending out newsletter emails, then you can stick on MailChimp. But if you really are serious about getting into triggered emails, driving more revenue, uh, Clay, you have to be the tool. Cool. All right, thanks, Austin. All right, thanks, Pat. Uh, and you guys will- Thank you guys. See you later sometime. Bye-bye.